Have you ever wondered how companies get USB ports into our modern day electronics like cell phones, laptops, and video display devices? In this video, I'm going to explain the benefits of USB-C and how we can think about it from a hardware design perspective and the genius of USB Type-C, including the protocols that it can support. Hey Tech Eds, I'm Tech Ed Kirsch, and in this video, I'm going to talk about USB Type-C. If you're like me, you probably are familiar with a little bit of the USB Type-C connector type, also known as USB-C. But maybe uh, you don't know exactly how or why it's been such a great deal or why it's used over, say, USB Type-A or any other typical connector, and exactly why it even needs to exist in the first place. When I first learned about USB-C, I thought it had everything to do with higher speeds and faster communications, faster drive storage, and while it can support these faster protocols, I learned soon enough that it actually only refers to the connector, not the speed. At first, I didn't see the point of coming out with yet another USB connector type or protocol, but as we continued to use more and more devices that rely on USB ports that are very different in shapes and sizes, and I got some designs that had different connector types for the same USB 3.0 or 2.0 standards, it just started getting confusing. And now I see the need for a more universal standard. The USB-C type is that connector standard. So what exactly is USB-C? What benefits does it provide? First of all, the USB-C is a connector type that is much smaller and more versatile than the previous USB connector standards. It's also more universal than, say, the Lightning connector, even though I do prefer my Lightning connector for my iPhone 12 Pro Max. But I might prefer the USB-C on this coming iPhone 15, uh, this next iteration of the iPhone. So actually, I was pretty disappointed when the iPhone 14 didn't come up with the USB-C standard last year, but it's not terrible. I can still use my lightning connector. One of the best features of USB Type-C is its ability to deliver more power than regular ports. In fact, USB-C can deliver up to 100 watts of power or even more, and that's enough to charge a laptop or to power an external display. For instance, I especially enjoy using the USB-C connector and cable to charge my M1 MacBook Pro, and it has a very clean look and also perhaps the most important benefit of USB-C is its ability to connect to a wide range of the devices and make USB hubs. It's a universal connector for all types of charging. It's one of the reasons why the European Union has pressed Apple to change their connector type to USB Type-C and why the iPhone 15 has it now. It didn't happen with the iPhone 14 um, and I was waiting for when that would happen so that I wouldn't have to use just a lightning charger for my phone. Another great feature of USB-C is its support for data transfer speeds up to 10 gigabits per second, actually even up to 20 gigabits per second based on the standard or depending on the standard that's not just the speed, just because of the connector type. Okay, the USB-C can accommodate slower speeds as well. Uh, so the USB Type-C I refer to is the connector and has nothing to do with the communication protocol. Key features of USB Type-C are how it can be flipped in any direction and it'll still work. Unlike my USB Type-A and uh, B MIDI and the micro types. And it can get really frustrating like if you're in the dark when you're trying to plug in the USB Type-A and it just, you flip it over multiple times and it still doesn't work for some reason. Uh, also the biggest plus for me aside from being able to flip the USB-C connector in any direction is that I can use my USB Type-C port because it supports the USB 3.1 and 3.2 communication protocol speeds. It can support third-party protocols such as DisplayPort and HDMI as well in a mode of operation called alternate mode. This means I can hook up my monitor to my laptop with the appropriate USB Type-C cable. I like to use my Asus ROG Strix gaming laptop to connect two monitors one through USB Type-C and up to a 4K resolution and also another monitor through the HDMI port and play some Street Fighter 6. In fact, I get a triple screen set up through my laptop and two monitors. USB-C also allows my devices to negotiate and choose an appropriate level of power flowing through the interfaces. And again, since the USB-C allows for more power, it can charge my laptop. And with all these benefits, USB-C is becoming more and more 
common in the market, although it's going to take some time for the market to fully adopt this USB-C. Searching from the consumer perspective to the designer perspective, using USB-C connectors with USB 3 speeds and higher protocols is not as an easy feat for a lot of designers. In fact, while we're at it, let's clear up some of the names and protocols for these different speeds. By the way, if you're a PCB designer and you're watching this video on your phone or on your laptop, then you're going to want to pay special attention to the next segment of this video. All right, let's talk about the USB protocols, like the actual communication protocols, not the connector type. USB-C is compatible with all the former USB protocols and existing ones and also USB 4. So I'm just going to go through uh, one through three because it gets a little confusing. USB 1.0 starts off at 12 megabits per second. That's 12 times 10 to the six bits per second. That's 12 million bits per second. Very fast. It would be called a certified USB and is compatible with your type A connector, which is what we're super familiar with, which uh, are like on every computer. Then there's USB type B connector. This is often found in the back of printers and is also compatible with USB 1.0 speeds. Then there's the USB 2.0, which operates at 480 megabits per second. That is millions of megabits, millions of bits per second. And it has all kinds of connectors. So type A connector, which is still familiar. Then you have type B, then mini B, mini A, micro A, micro B. Um, I use the micro B connector on my rechargeable laptop. Also for the like a PS3 controller, it uses the mini B, the mini USB. Okay, USB 3 has a whole history behind it, but just to cut it down right now, the latest standard is version 3.2, and that's kind of the end all be all for the standard. USB 3.2 Gen 1 replaces previous standards when it was going through its initial revisions. It used to be called USB 3.0, 3.1 Gen 1. Now it's called 3.2 Gen 1, it's the same thing. If you see 3.0, it's also the same thing. This is called Super Speed USB, and it would allow you to carry through a Type A connector, um, but the Type A connector has a blue bar, and then also has a Type B connector that looks different and has more pins than your other Type B connector for like USB 2.0 and before that. Then you have the Micro B connector, which has these two little connectors that is what's used in my external hard drive, or and this has this handles the USB 3.2 Gen 1. Now the speed of this thing is quite ridiculous. It's five gigabits per second. That's five times 10 to the nine, nine bits per second. So five billion bits per second, which is pretty ridiculous. All right, next we go to the Super Speed Plus. The Super Speed Plus specification just says you, instead of operating at five gigabits per second, we can now go up to 10 gigabits per second. So 10 billion bits per second. This is USB 3.2 Gen 2, and it can be operated through your typical Type A connector that has a blue indicator, Type B connector, so we'll look up for that. The Micro B connector is also an option, which has two connector types there, and also the USB Type C connector. You can use any of these connectors to carry up to 10 gigabits per second for this protocol USB 3.2 Gen 2. Then for USB 3.2 Gen 2 X2, you need to go with a USB Type-C connector at minimum. This can carry 20 gigabits per second, operating over two lanes instead of one lane. For each of these devices, like in the protocols, they're operating over usually one lane, okay, or one channel as you might call it, but in 3.2 Gen 2X2, it's operating over two lanes. And this one definitely requires the USB Type-C connector minimum. Likewise for USB 4, which I won't get into, probably talk about that in a different video. Yeah, the USB 4 protocol, that's going to require strictly USB Type-C as well. Okay, so just a quick recap. The USB protocols are jump leaps and bounds. USB 3.2 is a standard, trumps the USB 3.1s and 3.0s. USB 3.2 is the new name. USB 3.2 Gen 2 is the new name for USB 3.1 and Gen 1. I know it can, it's a little confusing. And then USB 3.2 Gen 2X2 is the former USB 3.2. Okay, let's talk about the USB connector pins. As I mentioned before, the USB Type-C connector is also reversible. It's flippable, meaning you can flip it on one side, and I'll call it side A, for instance, or you can flip it on side B, 
and it will still work the same. Unlike my USB type A that I keep trying to plug into my connector dongle for my M1 MacBook. Anyway, so how is this possible? Well, it's allowing this to do this by the 24 pin setup and I'm going to explain each of the pins. So A1 and B1, these are symmetrical. If you flip them over, they're going to connect as well. And these are ground. They provide your return signal path, especially, you know, if you route your PCB the correct way, of course, but they will provide your return for your ground signal. Likewise, A12 and B12, these are returns as well. Then you have A2 and A3 forming a differential pair, USB 3 communication, those high speeds communications. And then you have USB um, or B2 and B3, okay, doing the same function, high speed, USB 3.2 communication. And then moving on, we have A10 and A11, and they'll be receiving, not transmitting, but they're receiving the signal from the cables. And we're looking at the inside of the connector, by the way. So these will be receiving the USB high-speed signal up to 40 gigabits per second if you have USB 4. And then we have the VBUS pin A4 and B4. Notice they are mirrored, so they're symmetrical to allow for that flippability. Likewise for the transmit and receive differential pairs. Okay, and then you have A9 and B9. They are also VBUS. You're working with your 5 volts. Next, we have the channel configuration pins for CC1 and CC2 and A5 and B5. These detect the polarity of the connector or the cable that's connected into it. Now, D plus and D minus, uh, you know, if we already have differential pairs for USB 3, why do we have D plus and D minus? What are these for? They specifically refer to USB 2.0. Okay, so they are for slower speeds. So if you're only going to be able to clock that 480 megabits per second with the USB 2.0, this is what it uses. Notice A7 and B7 are D minus and A6 and D and B6 are uh, D plus. Again, for that reversibility of the connector. So, you know, very simple, but very clever. And then you have A8 and here are pins. These pins A8 and B8, they're used for the slower speeds while in alternate mode. The USB is also becoming more and more common in the market. So really it's a good idea to use it on, in my opinion, all of your designs as a hardware engineer, so you can future-proof your design. Of course, you're still gonna use USB connector type A a lot because that's still extremely common, but I definitely see more design going to just the USB-C and you just get a USB-C cable and convert it or something. And this is a reason why there's this big push from Europe to have Apple convert its devices uh, to that more universal B, uh, USB-C standard, okay, and they finally listen, and that's why that push has been happening. Because using all of these different connector types and the lightning, uh, you know, it gets confusing to stick just all these different standards. So you want to stick with one standard, make that work, and then move forward. Speaking of Apple, if you ever wonder what kind of software they use to design their PCB product, their printed circuit boards and everything, you know, depending on the department at Apple, a large share of their work is done in Cadence Allegro. And, you know, Cadence Allegro slash Orcad is a powerful PCB design software that supports all your high speed routing needs. And he's used by engineers all over the world to design everything from cell phones to laptops, like the same laptop that I'm recording uh, this video on. Hardware engineers go through painstaking detail, like doing signal integrity analysis, looking at device physics to make just a simple USB type C connector and the USB three communication protocol possible. So we can enjoy the technology that I'm making this content on today and uh, for my iPhone and the iPhone 15 that's uh, coming out. Okay, we go through signal integrity, reflection, signal analysis, and all of this just to make one simple connector and devices and products like these. So to sum it up, USB Type-C is the future. In fact, it's here now. It's versatile, powerful, and now even more universal with major players like Apple jumping on board finally. And from a hardware design perspective, it might present challenges, but the benefits it brings to consumers and the tech industry as a whole are undeniable. That's all for today. If you found this video informative, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more tech insights. I'm Tech Ed Kirsch, signing off. Peace. Thank you.